Hello, friends. Thank you so very much for uh, joining me today on uh, this live draw. So we are going to be um, uh, designing the Green Knight today. Um, so as you may see, uh, there is a little chat window underneath uh, the screen. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, which I think you would be unless you're watching it via a link, but I would suggest going to YouTube and watching it on YouTube because then you're able to chat on the side there. Um, uh, so uh, what I am going to do here is I figured that I would um, do a drawing. I'm sharing my screen, um, so I'm going to be doing this digitally. This isn't uh, intending uh, – what I'm going to be doing today is not – hey, Joe um, – is not to create a final piece, but to create the design that I'll use to make a final piece. So I'm doing a little uh, King Arthur Knights of the Round Table uh, figure set for my Patreon. Um, and so I finished those uh, this morning. I did them last uh, yesterday. Um, so I've got uh, King Arthur, I've got Lancelot. I used the uh, Mallory for um, the heraldry. Uh, I've got uh, Guinevere. So uh, Guinevere, I, I used her dad's uh, coat of arms as her color thing. Um, got a Merlin. Uh, so the um, I usually, uh, I mentioned this yesterday on Twitter, um, that I uh, that I, I tend to draw Merlin sort of in the musical Camelot movie version, which is a very woodsy uh very naturalistic sort of thing but that's also how i draw gandalf and i'm doing a lord of the rings thing so i figured that i wanted to do him separate um anyway a few more uh one of the ones that i'm doing is uh gawain um or garwin or however you pronounce his name um uh and so he his his shield is noted as being prefer with a uh double-headed eagle with azure uh arms and so i i went with that but i i went with taking the yellow from the shield to put it into his surcoat because um, Gawain, especially as he relates to the story of the Green Knight, has a lot of sun imagery um, uh, and is sometimes thought of as a solar hero. And so I wanted that yellow to, to carry across there. Um, so I wasn't planning on doing a Green Knight for this particular set. I thought I might extend this later on. But um, uh, some of my Patreon folks had mentioned that... Um, uh, because I always do my live events or live videos or things like that in, um, in the evening for me in order to make it uh, as accessible as possible for my American audience, uh, that tends to leave my European and African audience in the lurch uh, because, you know, it's uh, very middle of the night for them. So I figured I'd do this one midday for me, evening for uh, the folks across the Atlantic, and then that way hopefully uh, we'll be able to... to reach folks who usually aren't reachable. So I was trying to think of what I would draw. And I thought, well, you know, I'll go ahead and do the Green Knight. And we'll talk about character design. So um, first off, uh, hello to everybody uh, who is commenting. Thank you so very much. Joe, I'm so very glad to hear that the sketchbook arrived. It's great to see you. Uh, I, I need to give you a call at some point before too long and chat. Um, uh, Mr. Deans, uh, Ron, just lots of, lots of folks on here. Uh, thank you so very much for, for coming out. So, um, so the thing that I think is kind of interesting with, with, uh, the Green Knight is, is twofold. One, um, we're going to be addressing, uh, um, we are going to be addressing, um, the, source material uh, that we're using, which is the uh, medieval poem, um, uh, which I only recently read a translation of. The, when I read it in college, uh, I had to read it in the Middle English um, as part of my thing. I had one book. I was traveling. I didn't have access to the internet. Uh, and so, that, you know, luckily I had a glossary, but, you know, I had to sit there and read it out loud with a semi-Irish accent um, in order to make any sense of it. Uh, so, um, Hey, how are you doing, Kristen? Uh, Emmett, good to see you. Um, and so uh, I, I've gotten um, descriptions both from my original thing, so I still have that that uh, medieval literature book that I, I used for my class, 
Um, and I've still, and I've uh, also got the, uh, the the more recent uh, Nielsen translation from from ninety nine. Um, and so uh, I've got a list of all the descriptions that in the in the poem it goes into great detail about what the Green Knight is wearing when he comes in and things like that. Um, and so uh, so I made uh, I wrote wrote all that down um, what I've got here and there are. Uh, a few things of note. So, so I'm going to be thinking about this. I'm also going to be thinking um, pretty consciously about uh, the recent uh, Lowry movie um, with with Dev Patel um, uh, and the design used in that. Um, uh, there's a recent comic. There was a uh, 1980s uh, movie with Sean Connery as the Green Knight. Before that, there was made by the same people, same writer, same director, etc. cetera, uh, a movie in the 70s. So all of these have different versions, but the one that I want to stay away from, despite really liking it, is the new Lowry version of The Green Knight, which is kind of int-like. Um, it's very, uh, if you haven't seen it, there it leans really heavily into the Green Man motif and also really heavily into the idea that the Green Knight himself is made of woods and plants. Um, and so, hey, Chris, and hello to your uh, class. Um, so, uh, so there, there's a, a a line in here, and I, I didn't write down the exact line. I forget, but basically, it's saying, you know, his his the the fresh color of his clothing and things like that. It could be read either as it is indicative of the the greenness of of fresh vegetation, or that his clothing is fresh vegetation. I'll probably lean more into the latter. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that, um, wait, what is the other thing to keep in mind? Oh, uh, even though he's a knight, he is expressly described in the poem as not wearing any armor, no helmet, no chest piece, no uh, gorget, no anything. Like it goes into all the stuff that he's not wearing. Um, which is kind of tricky because I want to get across the night side of Green Knight. Um, I think that that's an important thing. So there will be areas in the description where I will consciously deviate from the description. So I'm going to go ahead and start drawing and talking to you rather than just talking to you. So um, I assume y'all can see the screen and I'm going to make the screen a little bit bigger here. Um, so I work in uh, landscape for or portrait format on my um, on my uh, Cintiq. So you can rotate your Cintiq, uh, and because I mostly do comics pages or I mostly do portrait orientation stuff, I rotated my Cintiq. It's up like this, um, and it makes it easier for me to draw than if I were working in landscape. Uh, it doesn't translate as well to uh, wide format video. So. Um, so some of the things that it discusses in the poem are his build, which is that he is among the tallest of men, that he in this case being the Green Knight, um, and that he is well-shaped. He has uh, an enormous uh, chest uh, and back, but a relatively, uh, a what, what's the term that it's at? Um, yeah, his back and breast so vast, but his belly and waist are properly slim. So... Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start off with what I want. Now, my my uh, Gawain, and part part of doing any kind of uh, design like this is thinking about how it interacts with the other designs in your project. And so uh, because I have these other characters, um, Gawain is relatively square in build. He's got a very round head uh, as a result, of course, of the... Uh, of the coif that he's wearing. Um, but his shoulders are pretty square. He's squarer than the other characters. So Lancelot's a little bit slimmer. Arthur's a little bit uh, uh, stockier, but doesn't have that square shoulder. So my initial thought would be to make the Green Knight really square, but I want it to um, contrast Garwin. So I'm gonna start thinking about uh, other shapes that are usual. So I'll think about, um, sort of these rounder forms and things along those lines. So he's got this big thing. Now he's, I, I recently did a drawing of um, uh, a 
cartoon Star Wars villain named Dirge, and all of a sudden this looks very much like Dirge. Um, so this is sort of a uh, an initial start. So I'm creating a, a and that's partially the, the elongated torso, but more so the 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 neck. Um, and so this is sort of my initial thought um, for this, and I don't know if I'll stick with it, but sort of these longer arms, longer limbs. It mentions him being very proportionate, but who cares? Uh, proportionate is no fun. Um, and especially if I'm trying to create something that is otherworldly, I want to lean into that otherworldliness with a with a sort of a non classical representational body set here. Um, so this is one possibility. I'll scoot him over a little bit. Um, you know, another would be to think, well, what is what does a tree look like? So I'm going to start um, drawing a tree. A tree is thicker in the bottom, and then just just sort of to use as a as a thought. Like, can I um, uh, can I do this? Um, so, uh, Music City Makers. No, uh, there's a specific Green Knight um, graphic novel that I have not had a chance to get yet. Matt, it's good to see you. Um, uh, and I, I'll pick it up uh, at some point when I um, am at a show and have, an a have access to it. Um, but I'm looking forward to, to reading it. Um, uh, hey, Nicole, I'll get into the color stuff um, a little bit later on because that'll be especially important with this one where I'm using ostensibly all shades of green or variations on it. I'll, I'll, I'll lean probably pretty heavy into gold and yellow too. So um, one of the things also that it says about this character, which is really interesting, and it's, uh, which is one of my favorite details because it's just a bunch of hot nonsense and I love hot nonsense, um, is that he has a an extremely bushy beard and extremely bushy hair and it grows down and is cut off square across at the elbow to the point that it looks like he's wearing a, a um a mantle um and so something like that would and it cut off at the elbows um would look kind of like this uh and create this bell shape which again would run really counter to what um uh the gawain drawing looks like um uh and so i think that for something like this um uh and and also you know uh gawain's is round at the top so i will probably put some branchy bits or something like that at the top in order to um make that work so the downside with creating this crazy beard bell shape which i do really like because it runs uh, contrary to a lot of design stuff that we, we've seen in the past. Um, and so that's probably where I'm going to lean pretty hard, um, is that it also means that you don't get a lot of other stuff. So it mentions his, his cowl and his cloak and his hood and the fur that lines it and all this stuff, which if I do this, um, uh, this beard and hair shape, then... I'm going to lose all of that detail. Um, uh, now, can I introduce that detail elsewhere in here? Absolutely. Um, and that's probably what I'll do. So uh, let me see. So sometimes when I have something like this, um, I will, uh, I'll build in layers. I'll use different colors. Um, I'm going to make this blue just to make it a little easier to draw on top of. Um, and I'll start to figure out uh, on top of that what I want to do. So I tend to do my, my design stuff um, with a lot of layers. So I work in Photoshop. Um, uh, <laughs> um, I work in Photoshop and uh, layers are easy for me to, to work with. You can kind of see my little, my layout here. Um, I've got my, my palette, which used to be just these three lines and it's subsequently grown substantially. I could stand to trim that down, but I know where everything is. Um, I've got my my history stuff at the bottom, and then I've got my, my tools over on the side. Um, and so Jeff Jeff mentions maybe the beard could be bound or braided, and that could leave more room for, for clothing detail. Um, and that's true, and that is a, a viable um, uh, way to go about that. But 
the 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 description sort of with that cutoff square across the elbows i really like that and i haven't seen anything like that so um uh I, i'm sure there are characters like this that exist but none of them strike me as immediately familiar and none of them strike me as immediately familiar uh on the um uh for this particular genre so um i'll start to figure out like do i want the face to be you know, long and lean like this. Do I want it to look human or inhuman is a big part of it. And how much does that play into the, um, the, whether or not he, you know, uh, is the, the same character as the, uh, the Lord with whom, uh, Gawain finds, um, hospitality. Are they supposed to have, elements that look the same is it a wholesale transformation all these things are things that i'll be considering so i could do something like this which is a little more trollish um i don't really like that so um now let me try to do something a little more dignified um sort of a straight nose um a no i still kind of like those those really wide kind of glowy eyes um And I also kind of like the idea, although it does definitely mention it as hair in the thing. Um, I do like that that green man thing where it's kind of vines. And so thinking about how those vines are going to work, um, I think makes a difference. Um, the other things, this is also, it's not just supposed to be his beard here. Uh, it's also It's also supposed to be his hair. And so I need to think about that. That's an element that I'm not thinking about is how does the hair come down? He's starting to look like Alan Moore now, this long hair and the, the beard there. Um, and does that beard, it mentions the beard is like as thick as a bush. Um, so thinking about how all of these elements sort of come together. Um, I do a lot of uh, erasing um, and starting over when I, when I do this kind of thing. Um, now I'm thinking um, what, uh, yeah, how do I want that mustache to look? How do I want that face to look? Do I want it to be small? Um, oh, that's interesting. So David, um, uh, you'll probably know David from uh, Mouse Guard. Uh, he mentions perhaps less vine-like and more upside-down branch-like. That is not something that I thought of before. Um and that's really good. And now, David, oh, you're you're giving me good ideas, but you're also hearing me away from uh, uh, being able to demonstrate what my uh, um, what my thought process is with it. Although that's a really good thought process, so I'm I'm, I'm going to try that out. Um, I love that there. Yeah. Um, But yeah, so making the bottoms. No, I think it. No, I think it's a really good suggestion. Um, uh, yeah, trying to think about how that nose is going to look and whether he has a hat. You know, he, it, it mentions him not having a helmet, but there's no reason that he couldn't have a a crown of some sort or something like that that maybe has. Um, you know that you get a lot of antler motifs in regards to um, Green Man stuff, in addition to the uh, uh, Green Man being sort of a traditional iconography of like a a fertility uh, fella. Um, so maybe maybe something like that to counter out what's going in the bottom. Um, probably just a simple nose. Um, He's starting to look a little too Odin-y here, so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna scrap that after all. Um, so yeah, for me, a lot of this is sort of deciding what's going to work and what's not going to work, and scrapping things. Um, you know what? Actually, what if he's bald on the top? Um, yeah, I kind of like that. Um, 
So something interesting uh, about Green Knight, I posted that I was going to be doing this talk on Facebook, and one of my dad's former collaborators uh, mentioned that my dad worked on a Green Man opera for a while um, that he never completed. And I think that's really neat. I bet that would have been a really neat thing. He did a couple operas where he was on stilts, um, uh, one of them being Love for Three Oranges. He was the cook in that and was about eight and a half feet tall, really terrifying. Um uh, he, he's a big, uh, second base and would do, um, a lot of stuff, but he, but he, he wrote a lot of operas in addition to, um, performing in them. And I really wish that I had a chance to, to see that, um, considering who the collaborator was, it was Beverly Easterly. Um, usually when he worked on operas with her, they would end up being sort of, uh, uh for lack of a better word, family operas. They would be geared at, um, in introducing opera to younger uh, audiences and things along those lines. And so he did, did a few like that and, you know, it would be performed uh, schools would come in and stuff like that. Um, and so I really wish that something had come of that because it would have been pretty neat. And it also would have meant that we would have had more uh, armor and stage weaponry at the house, which I always loved as a kid. Um, so that would have been pretty neat. So now I'm sort of thinking about what David said and looking at the uh, the idea of this sort of looking like an upside down tree or shrub. Um, but I want it to read as I don't know if that'll where I like the iconography of that. I like that idea, um, but hey, I'm, but I think that. Um, I, I think that that's going to suggest a, oh no, whoops. I think that's going to suggest a, um, a, why sometimes I drag stuff to the trash and it just, there we go. Um, I think that it will suggest a, um, uh, a hard physicality to that. Like that's his physical shape, which is not something I, I want to, Suggest the shape that it is a movable shape. Um, so again, I'm having a little bit of trouble with this. Maybe I should try something instead of uh, this this bell shape. Um, or let me see. Maybe instead of that bell shape, I start with the bell shape, and it is straight across here. Um, Now he sort of has too much of a haggard vibe um, for what I want. So I don't think that I want that. Um, uh, Jason mentions perhaps piggybacking on David's suggestion. Uh, Cornish elms often grow in the angle due to strong, strong winds. Could it be offset from the bell of the body? Um, I I like that as an idea. Oh, we, you you just mean the, the angle of the, the cut maybe. Um, uh, and so, um, potentially like I, I tend to try and stay away from a from hard asymmetry or angular asymmetry in character design, because if I get to the point where, I mean, this is just going to be a standalone figure, so it doesn't matter as much, but if I am, um, uh, ever working with, um, these characters in a physical thing where they're going to be doing stuff. So a comic, animation, storyboards, anything like that. Uh, creating a, a really asymmetrical quality to the, the costuming or the form or something along those lines. Um, it makes it a little bit tricky to suggest that form in movement. And so if I have a character reaching across or throwing something or using a sword or jumping or whatever it might be, there that creates an angle of line that the either you lose when you introduce that asymmetrical element um, because now it just looks like it's naturally like that, or um, it's going to counteract that to the point that you kind of lose that, that dynamism. Um, <laughs> so, um, so I, there, there are aspects of that idea that I really like that asymmetry of like a wind blown elm 
that I don't think I want to incorporate into the design because I think it would make a, an action sequence harder. And there isn't really an action sequence with the Green Knight. You know, they don't fight even though they should. Uh, you know, I, I, I want them to fight because I like, you know, I like things to culminate in a big fight. Um, but uh, but I think that I'm going to keep a, a symmetrical one. Um, uh, Chris mentions um, uh, flipping this flipping the bell shape upside down. One could potentially do something with that. Um, uh, I think that's going to end up looking too much like uh, a, a handlebar mustache world competition, which I think kind of suggests a degree of frivolity that I don't necessarily want with this fella. Um, so, you know, the, the, the bell shape may be a little bit much like that. I, I like it as an idea. I don't know how well it will work in, um, in practice. Um, we do want him to have a neck because his head does come off that, that, the, the, uh, the bell shape thing also, um, does create a, a logistical problem there, which I didn't think about, which is that there's a scene in which uh, his head gets lopped off and he picks it up and puts it back on. It's a whole thing, carries it around. Um, if you've got that bell shape, like way up from the head, you don't really get a clear sense that the head is chopped off or you lose, does all the hair below fall off? Actually, that could be kind of neat. It's chopped off at the neck and then uh, there's a whole bunch of hair left in a ring on the floor with blood on it when he walks off. Like you could do some neat stuff with that. And then he has a shorter beer bell shape. Um, uh, so yeah, so Emma mentions potentially, um, uh, ending the bell shape a little bit higher up, which is entirely possible. I kind of like the, uh, the, it reaches down to the elbows. Like that's just so ridiculous that I love it. But something like this would be a lot more viable um, from an, uh, a movement standpoint. So let's let's move it to just below the shoulders here. Um, give him sort of a slightly asymmetrical mouth. Um, uh, Ralph Iverson plays him in the uh, in the Lowry movie, and he's got sort of a a, a hawk like nose and. Uh, I kind of like that, um, so I may stick with that here. Yeah, I think something like this is going to work. And I do really like the cutoff, especially because I can put little active cuts around the bottom of it. Um, uh, oh, that's a really... Uh, good point. So Matt with Music City Maker suggested that the Green Knight could be post beheading. He could be carrying around his head, which is pretty cool idea. Um, but I kind of, I don't know. I want the, I want the, uh, uh, sort of a baseline thing that may be how I choose to do the final art. Um, uh, okay. So now I'm feeling a little bit better about this. Um, And then you've got some winding around this way. Okay, so now this is starting to look a little bit more like what I think it might. Um, and some of that. And then we'll be able to see some of the space through there. So now it does kind of have that that hedge like quality, and it'll it'll sort of be be mixed a little bit. But yeah, I think I think that could work pretty well. Um, uh, I might give him. Whoops, sorry, my thing gets wonky. Um, trying to decide if I want to give him sort of elf ears. Uh, I think that will. Um, I think that will pull a little bit away from the scariness of them, but I think that like 
making it to where he's almost bald. I kind of do like that. And I like those those upper bits there. I'll have that, that part slipped back. Um, so, um, yeah, and I might. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with how that head is looking. Okay, so... Um, and all, yeah, Christmassy is sort of one of, one of the things that I, I want to go with here. So, um, uh, okie doke. So now um, I've got, I think that there. So some other stuff that uh, it mentions. Um, uh, he has a straight coat tied to his side, a fair mantle over it, showing its lining and trimmed with white shining fur. So I think I would like to repeat this shape directly underneath it with a hint of that mantle that we otherwise might not see. And so it's got, um, in this it's, it's mentioned as nice white sh shining hair. Um, like a, a nice rabbit or ermine or something, but I'm going to go with sort of making it kind of like a Tibetan wool, like this kind of raggy, um, really textural fur, because I I just like really textural stuff. Um, uh, so we showcase that this is on top of it. So now we have this thing. Um, now I worry with the body, that that upper part there, the body is going to look really scrawny, even though he is going to be really big. Um, and so, um, so I'm trying to think of how best to do this. So, so even though this is probably not how, I, you know, I wouldn't do this in pencils. Um, just this is going to be easier for me than what the oil. Oh, there we go. Um, no more lights. Jumping every which way. Is it on distort? Oh, no, it's skew. That's the reason. Um, perspective. I don't know what's going on here. Let me, hang on. Okay, let me try this again. So I'm going to transform distort, uh, and I'm going to make his head a little bit. smaller and tapering so now he's he's kind of get, getting this giant quality and although he slims down at the base here i'm thinking that he actually will get bigger at the base like he might get smaller at the the waist but then spread out again like right now his legs are really small and i think i actually might make his torso small and his legs bigger than than what i was thinking because i don't really like how this compresses uh this sense of shape um into him like it makes his it makes him feel less big, regardless of the fact that he's physically there uh, and over there. So um, Lord Sketch mentions it's beautiful. There's nothing right now that conveys night. That is true. So um, something that, that I mentioned earlier that's in the poem is it expressly states that he is not wearing any sort of armor. Um, and so the question is, do I include any sort of armor? Um, do I lean into the idea that he has natural forms that suggest armor? Um, so like he has stuff growing out of him that suggests a breastplate or gaunt, uh, uh, bracers or, uh, or van braces or whatever else. Um, or do I leave him in simply sort of a, a medieval clothing? So there's, 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 um, structural uh, or, or not structural thematic arguments as to why he isn't carrying a sword or things like that, that he's got an ax um, because it's the difference between the civility of the court and the, um, the uh, sort of the, the, the pure nature of the, the woods and the wilderness and the green chapel where he is. Um, and so to incorporate those nightly elements would break thematically with what's there. 
but we call him the Green Knight. We want him to be dressed like a knight. I want him to be dressed like a knight. So there, there, there are those factors to consider. So um, I'm going to uh, make this a little bit smaller and rethink what I want. So right now, the the, the baldness and the uh, um, uh, the 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 baldness and the beard and the rest of it kind of has a um, sort of almost like a frost giant look to it, and I don't want to do that. So I want to make sure that I'm doing stuff that keeps it from falling into sort of generic giant territory. Um, hmm. Oh, thank you very much, Nelson. Um, so, um, Oh, that's an interesting thing. So, so uh, Nilsa mentions um, uh, the the head cuts off some of the beard and hair, suggesting the only reason he had this beard and haircut to begin with is because his head had come off previously. Um, in the the Lowry movie, and I cannot remember if this happens uh, in the book. if he rides away with the head off or if he puts the head back on. I stopped this time around after the description. Um, uh, but if he rides away with the head off, you know, he needs that ear to regrow the, uh, the, the vines that, that connect it to the body, which is a kind of a cool idea. I like that a lot. Um, okay. So let's think uh, about the body shape here before we continue on. So again, sort of um, <laughs> uh, changing what I'm thinking. And now this is sort of where I start to introduce that that asymmetry of body. The uh... so now do I make his feet? tree like um he does ride a horse i'm not going to design his horse uh this time around but i think you you do the the horse is also given a lot of uh info um i don't really like the bell bottom tree legs uh but i also you know there i think there's still potentially merit there to it um so he's got his um does mention his axe and has descriptions of his axe. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a good point. So Lord Sketch mentions that he looks kind of inty, um, and I do want to stay away from that. Um, I like I like the the green man aspect. I like leaning into the the foresty bits, but I think leaning more into vines than trees is going to be important to differentiate it from the the movie version. Um, so as you can see, again, lots of reworking stuff. Um, if I were doing this as a studio gig, I would just keep building more and more things and doing quick sketches and finishing them uh, and sh you know, showing the different stages because sometimes there's stuff in one stage that although it doesn't work for this particular project, might work for another one and whatever art director or whoever I'm working with might spot stuff that they want along the way that I've subsequently abandoned. Um, but because this is working for specifically a um, an illustration that'll be part of the set, I only did one uh, final design for it. Um, so now I'm starting to think, you know, we were talking about the armor. Um, uh, and the, the, the type of armor that I'm using with the rest of the Arthurian characters is uh, chainmail. And so now I'm starting to think, is there a way to suggest chainmail with vines? Um, and I think that there might be. So I'm going to give him a belt. It does mention that he has a belt. It's a fine belt. It's got precious stones in it. Uh, there, there's a whole lot of like a little bit too much going on with Green Knight, too much green, too much fanciness, too much, etc. in the descriptions. Like I don't 
think I can. Oh, he doesn't need a sword scabbard because he doesn't have a sword. Um, but I do like the idea of suggesting um, suggesting armor, even though there isn't armor. And so I think I am going to go with like a a weaved vine type of deal. Um, it mentions that he's wearing hose. It does not mention that he's wearing a shirt. It does say a uh, tight jacket tied or jacket tied tight. Um, I think I might give him a, a bare midriff here. Um, so Sean Connery in the, the 1982-ish version uh, sort of famously has a bare midriff. He's like all all dressed. You can uh, find the, the movie. It's called Short of the Valiant. Um, it's, it's actually very fun. It is uh, objectively has a lot of very bad parts, but I recently rewatched the previous Green Knight movie that the director and writer made uh, in some instances with the same cast um, uh, and, or uh, some, some characters playing the same characters. Um, but uh, the first one is sort of this completely joyless thing. Um, the second one uh initially i was like do they realize when they're being funny or is it uh just unintentional result of bad filmmaking and i've come to decide they do realize when they're being funny and there is a sort of a a wit and bombacity through the whole thing but anyway the sean connery version is a whole lot of fun um i like the lowry one i think the sean connery version is probably my favorite version of the story that's been filmed um but yeah just just Big old bear midriff. I kind of like that. Um, uh, somebody else, uh, a couple of people have mentioned crop top in the thing. I was going to have it go all the way down and be tied. Now I'm actually thinking uh, that I that I do it as a as a crop top. Like he's he's too big for it. I don't know. Um, I think bringing it all the way down is going to be the same. John Michael, very good to see it. Um, so I'm um, trying to think of other things that it mentions that are important and there really aren't uh, besides sort of what's, what's there. So um, I do think I'm going to, yeah, suggest the, the sense of armor with, with vines. Um and now he's he's still sort of he he has another worldliness, but he also um, definitely feels more like a uh, non tree man, which I think is is important uh, in the context of the existing tree man versions. Um, so things stop working. There we go. Um, And you know I'm gonna yeah give him give him mitts of uh, the vines yeah so I'm gonna uh, says he doesn't have armor and he doesn't have armor but he has vines so that'll work so uh, Nuno good to see you Shell good to see you um so lots of folks on here um so uh, now I'm feeling pretty good about uh, where he is now I've got to think about the axe um so it mentions that the axe has uh, that he grips it by the steel shaft um but it also but i, I don't think the, the entire axe is steel i think that there needs to be some wood in there but that means that there's going to be a long enough shaft part with it um it also mentions that the the head of the axe is um an l length yard so that's like about a uh what four feet um so that's a that's a real big act so rather than something like this uh i'm thinking something long and straight because uh gawain has to be able to lift it um so if you've got a four foot axe head uh compressing it down to almost more of a halberdy type of thing i think is going to make a more plausible uh bit of weaponry um the other question is is it a woodsman's axe is it a battle axe like these are things that are gonna 
make a difference. So like these days, um, if y'all do any in wood cutting, um, a lot of times our ax handles are like this. Um, and that's a relatively new uh, development, the sense of the, the curve in there. If you go back, you know, even, even, you know, 80, a hundred years, um, most uh, ax handles are going to be completely straight. So there's a, um, if you're talking about, about wood ax thing. Um, and so, uh, another alternative, um, Could be it goes up and down, but um, there's a substantial um, uh, I think of what the word is I'm thinking here cavity, I guess. Um, where you know, less less metal to heft. Is that going to brittle it up? I don't really know. Um, so, so the question is, do you have, uh, like Sean mentioned, a really uh, absurdly long beard? Do you have something that goes up and down in the same uh, thing? Or... Do we go with something uh, even more unexpected, um, which would be sort of a, a an almost straight type of thing um, with designs and stuff? It also mentions it has lace and tassels on it and things like that. Um, so. A big part of this, as as much as um, uh -oh. as much as trying to make something that is viable in the thing here, um, there's also I, I also really want to make sure that it deviates from what an audience is going to expect. Um, sometimes there are places where you want to lean into what an audience expects, especially with your your main characters and things like that, because. I have a habit of trying to be different for the sake of being different. And then, you know, that, that can be a, a, a potential turnoff for your, your audience as well. Um, and so this is the, this acts as one of those situations, one of those instances where I'm like, do I do sort of like something like this kind of appeals to me because it's so weird, but it also mentions how, how beautiful and great an act is. Um, and nobody's going to look at this and say it's beautiful and great. So, um, so we're going to scrap those. Let's see how it would look if he were to be holding it. Um, and you know what is going to help with this is I am going to... Grab the scan of Wayne. Uh, and figure out how big he would be in relation to this Green Knight. So Green Knight has to ride a horse. He's uh, amongst the tallest of men, but he's not... Um, uh, he, he's not so tall that they describe him as a giant or anything. So I think something along these lines is going to work. But this helps me gauge, you know, what that axe head thing is going to be. So four, four ish feet. Uh, now we have Gawain as our, um, oops, as our standard of measurement. And we can say, okay, well, the axe head is supposed to be that big. That is, I feel like there's no way to make that work. Um, so I'm going to deviate from the text source uh, pretty much entirely. At this point, seeing that and saying, okay, can that work without him being 12 feet tall? 
it can't. Um, or at least I don't see a way to do it and make it look the way that I want it to look. Um, so now instead I start to think about, well, what, how does that act work? Does it have a long handle? You know, we assume that there's this really long handle, but maybe, maybe it's a short handle. Ah, it's got to have the big thing. Okay. Sorry. I'm, I'm doing my thinking out loud rambling thing, which is what I need to do. But, um, Get rid of old Garwin here. Um, well, it says it says the 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 uh, the head of the axe was um, was an an L's yard, so that's that's about four feet um, or one one point twenty five yards, so a little little less than twelve uh, four feet, like uh, three foot seven or something, um, but still pretty pretty big. Um, Move that in. I don't hate that. Um, and you know, I'm gonna put a counterweight uh, on the bottom here. <laughs> um okay david says i don't hate that the mantra of every artist which is which is true um okay so i feel uh yeah I'm, i kind of like this and i think that um i'm going to create uh, a recess here and this is where the uh the lace is going to be. It's like lace with nice embroidered buttons and tassels and things along those lines. Um, so that is about, I think, what my, I, I feel pretty good about him overall. So now I'm going to figure out what those colors would be, tighten it up a little bit. Um, uh, hey, Ariel. Hey, good to see you. Um, so, um, so now is where we, where we get into color. So earlier Nicole mentioned color, um, uh, and this is where that will, um, get flushed out a bit. So let me change this to black. Um, I'm gonna... I'm the guy. There we go. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to make him quite a bit bigger here and zoom in a bit. Okay. So um, y'all can see him now. I'm going to do the quick flip test, make sure he doesn't look too wonky. He does look too wonky. Um, uh, I know there was recent discussion about this, about whether or not, uh, you know, flipping your art is a worthwhile thing or something. It usually is for me because I can start to see, well, okay, here's some weird bits here that I think could be improved upon. Sometimes you want some, a degree of asymmetry, um, but especially since I did something like distorting that head, um, that head distortion is going to have consequences to the underlying structure here. So, um, I think he needs some big eyebrows, which he didn't have before. So, okay, there we go. Um, uh, thanks so much, Eric. It's good to good to see you. Um, uh, like the idea of the eyebrows, but I need to do that. Yeah, Joe, I think it's a, a worthwhile um, uh, thing. Okay, so yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy with that. So now what I'm going to do is go in and figure out what the um, uh, thing is, so Jordan asked, do I ever get a negative result from the flip test? Meaning, 
that it looks, uh, I'm not sure exactly what you mean, meaning that I think it, it has negatives. Uh, absolutely. Meaning that I flip it and it looks fine. Also, absolutely. Like it really depends on the drawing. A lot of times, like for this one, it's mostly the feet um, was where that, like I was generally happy with the whole thing. And then because I did that weird skew of the head, um, that's where I saw that, oh, okay, well that did not register uh, the way that I wanted it to. So this nose kind of has a, almost like broken to the side quality. I kind of dig that. Um, so now we'll go in and figure out like what my colors are gonna be. And usually if I'm working for um, something like watercolor like sometimes i will figure that out ahead of time this would be more this degree of character design is something that i would do more if i were creating a character that i'm going to be using for more than one illustration um uh but i'm going to go ahead and delete all these other layers so that they're not um clunking things up character actually i like this enough that i'll probably end up using it for the pencils um and uh print them out and light boxing it uh, so now I've got greens and uh, yellows predominantly, so and browns. So it mentions he's all green, head to toe he's green. He's got green and green and green. You can only do so much with green. Um, and uh, me especially, I can only do so much with green because uh, I it, it's very hard to integrate green well with other colors and not have green be the dominant thing. Like green tends to pop a lot, the brighter it is, more so than some of the other colors. Um, and it's harder to create sort of a unified palette because it doesn't, green isn't exactly cool, it isn't exactly warm. And so um, when you introduce it into a red uh, heavy thing, uh, it becomes, you know, red heavy thing with a lot of greens. Um, uh, so uh, Ariel, in this instance, I'm not actually doing a final drawing. So uh, Ariel mentions, why do you do colors before finishing the line art? Um, so uh, in in this instance, um, uh, I'm just doing a design. So I'm just figuring out sort of a very rough uh, design thing that I can use to do a subsequent watercolor illustration. Um, yeah, Dave mentions, but what is green? So that that's the thing is a lot of times I will, my greens tend to be grays. They tend to be yellows. Um, they tend to be blues that read as green within the larger context of the image. Um, it's very rare that I use actual green, um, but I am going to use actual green here. So uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and start, just wrap this whole fella up and start with a base green, probably a bright base green. Um, and build on top of that. So part of the question that I'll have when I'm working with this is, um, do I want my, my guy to be the greenest thing and his trappings to be the more subdued ones? That's not green. Um, so I'm going to use this, this green here to start. And that ain't terrible. I kind of like that. Um, uh, so I think that he is going to be the greenest aspect. Um, so I will start to introduce, whoops, um, other elements. So the. I mean, it mentioned the the text mentions expressly that his hair and beard are green, but I'm gonna start to bring that brown in and lessen it a little bit. Um, one of the things, so 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 something that Nicole mentioned: how do you choose the colors for your characters? One of the things that's that's incredibly important for me um, when it comes to character design, especially if I'm going to be using something um in uh narrative is uh that i do everything i can to in some way connect the appendages so uh head hands feet or you know wrists ankles you know uh, somewhere on the head that kind of thing um but those those appendages i want to read as close together as possible because it allows the mind of the reader uh, or viewer when looking at it to connect these different elements into a silhouette, regardless of what's happening in the middle. 
And so if you have somebody wearing, you know, uh, like Batman's a great example with his, you know, but well, like Neil Adams, he Batman, so you, or, or Bruce Tim, you've got the gloves, the boots, the mask, you have a, a breakup element in the middle to showcase where the hips are at any given moment. Um, and so whatever that character is doing, you know, arm here, arm here, foot over here, you read the whole body because those unified values are carrying across. So whatever I do with his hands, with his head, with his feet, they're all going to be close to the same, either in value, in warmth, in hue. If I'm lucky, all three. Sometimes you can't do all three, but I'm going to try real hard to do all three. Um, so what does that mean? Like, I don't want everything to read green because now if his arm is in front of his body, uh, then that arm is going to get lost. I'm going to lose that silhouette value, um, which, you know, part of that, yeah, that's composition of, of image. But also I want to make sure that I am doing everything I can to give myself the tools that those hands and feet and head can use the body as a frame in order to make those things pop. Um, uh, so I got to think about that. So I'm thinking I'm going to keep that, that this type of green and this type of thing. Same with uh, these, this thing. You've got this weavy bit here. Um, so now I'm going to go for a much more subdued, uh, darker, sort of almost like olive-y uh, thing. So I've got this. It does mention that he's wearing shoes. What did he say about shoes? Um, oh, shoes with gold spurs under richly darkened bands. Now, now, like, because of this, because I only have it once, like, all our eyes are going straight to his pants, and we don't want to, like, you know, really draw tons of attention to his pants. So we've got to repeat this color elsewhere. I feel like any place you use um, color in an image uh, or in a design, you want to repeat that color elsewhere with the rare exception of uh, incorporating an element that you want to be the, the primary point of focus. Um, um, uh, so like I, now I've got this thing here. I'm going to put this as the coat here. And now it's um, working a little bit better for, for what I want. It's not drawing as much attention there as it might. Um, so it mentioned that white fur that lines his mantle. Um, I don't want to do a straight white, but I'm going to do kind of this cream. Um, it's uh, It doesn't run too counter to what's going on there. Uh, I'm going to put that cream on this, on the lace that is on the axe head. Um, I feel like it needs to be repeated one more place. Uh, it mentions the spurs being held on with bands. So this is where I'm going to add those those bands and those spurs here so now something else to keep in mind this axe um is going to be uh whoops i'm going to treat it like it's made of bronze it mentions that it's made of steel but you know what steel isn't green steel isn't gold um so this is going to be a bronze axe um Really. Yeah, there we go. Um, I will use a little bit of. So we'll have the the head part be sort of this gold here. Um, and now I've got this element here, and this isn't repeated elsewhere. So now let me make these ties this color. Um, and the space around his eyes, that color. And these white teeth, so they're not popping out too much. Okay. And okay. So I'm feeling pretty good about his colors. He's he it, the elements are are reading. Um uh, 
well the way that I want, like because again, like repeating color forms, um, making sure that those appendages read clear. I probably want to lessen a little, like introduce something else into these armory bits so that they're not competing with the the those body parts. Um I think is he gonna have sort of a brownish belt with gold bits here. Um and I'm gonna hint at the mantle underneath that beard a little bit so that you can see that that's coming through here. So now uh, th those colors, I'm starting to get really happy with it. Um, and I'll use this brown of the belt to create the wood of the, uh, of the thing. It mentions that it's intricately uh, done up there. Um, uh, Put a little bit more of a shine on that head. Um, boom, boom, boom. Uh, so I feel pretty good overall about this guy. Give him his little spurs. And um, add some dark there. So I still need something for the uh, for the eyes. I don't know what I'm going to do with the eyes. Um, uh, since this is going to be watercolor, I can only make my images so uh, bright. So the yellow of the eye, like should his eyes be green because he's the green knight, they're going to get lost. So I think that um, having this... Uh, this thing kind of has a swamp thing vibe, but I'm okay with that. Um, uh, but yeah, I think on the whole, uh, I'm pretty happy with how this looks. Um, do I want to give him a crown? Do I want to give him like a thing? I'm going to fiddle with that because I kind of like the idea of it. Um, let's see. There's, that's not it, but there's something there. Um, there's something that I like. So, so uh, part, you know, again, talking about the thematic aspects of the story, there's, um, there's, uh, um, there's elements of the, you know, this is Christmas time. The, the green knight is the green about to be slain by winter. Um, uh, and so, do we want the, you know, a sun motif? The sun motif like ties in with uh, Gawain. That little band kind of does that. I don't know how I would connect that band. I don't necessarily want to give him a crown. Um, uh, I tried I tried an antler thing earlier, Jordan, and I didn't really like how it looked because it gave him too, too Norse uh, a quality uh, that I, I uh, so I think I'd rather do something let me see. I don't know. That little circle is kind of fun. I don't know. What What do y'all y'all like? Do you like the uh, the little disc thing there, or nah? Get rid of it. You know. I wonder if he oughtn't have nice little. Decor things. Here. Boom, 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 boom. I kind of like that. Um, the Christmas oranges are fun. Um, let me see. 
yeah so marcus mentions moss and things like that um like i think that uh for that that'll be something that i think will manifest itself in the final art um like with the textural stuff uh same with here like i really like the idea of there being like uh sort of you know what will essentially be like mossy bits on top of them um but i'm not gonna oh whoops uh i'm not gonna write about that as much on the design end of things um uh, so yeah, I think I'm, I, I don't know, th this is one of those things that's kind of weird. Like, I don't know how this is connected. Like it's such a graphic element. Uh, Arrow, good to see you. Um, and I am, uh, about to wrap up for everybody who is leaving. Um, uh, so one of the things that's a little bit tricky is I don't know exactly how that disc thing works, how it would be affixed or something like that, but I'm kind of okay with it just being a graphic element so i think i'm gonna um leave that on there uh as as that or something close to it um so i think that is my um that is my uh green knight design so i will use him uh in conjunction with the uh with the the uh, Arthur figures. So I'll probably draw him up final today uh, and post him out. Uh, and so I will be on Patreon posting the, the the paper figures probably in the morning or the next or on Monday. Um, and uh, for folks who aren't on Patreon, you'll see it sometime next week. So uh, I think that's it before uh, I end. So that, that's it for the drawing. But um, uh, if anybody has questions about um, uh, about uh, character design or thanks, Jason, um, or approaching source material or things like that, um, I can take a couple minutes to to answer those. Um, so, anybody have any questions before continuing? Thank you all so very much. I know it takes a second to, to type things. So but I figure we'll do like five five more minutes of questions if anybody wants it. And if nobody does, that's fine too. So um, I'm really glad to see that I can screen share. I wasn't sure that I could do a uh, screen share on this. Oh, I also completely forgot that I could have been clicking uh, y'all's comments and having them come up on the screen for me to comment on them rather than... Uh, um, uh, rather than just um, uh, reading them. Uh, so Shell asks, how do you uh, sort of play something like the Green Knight in a historical setting for yourself? Um, uh, Jim, yes, this will still be up on YouTube. Like you'll still be able to view it with the same link that was on there before. Um, uh, so so something like this, there, there are aspects of it. Like a lot of it has to do more with... Um, sort of the feel of something than incorporating anything else. Like because I am uh, dealing sort of exclusively with uh, male armor, sort of like late uh, 12th, early 13th century stuff, um, uh, I didn't want to incorporate any kind of plate uh, in here. Um, uh, and so um, that, to some degree, colored how I'm going to be doing these arms and the legs. Um, and so, uh, so really, it 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 deviates considerably depending on the project. So, like, if I'm doing something like a Greek mythology character or things like that, like I will use Greek clothing. I will use things like this. Green Knight's a little bit tricky because he's not really or at least the, the way that I wanted to do him, he's not really wearing anything that suggests period uh, with the exception of the, the mantle um, uh, and the spurs. And so those give me some elements that I can draw on to do this kind of thing. Um, uh, but I, I do before I ever work on something that is even wholly fictitious, if it's got, clothing elements, if it's got design elements, like I think about those in conjunction with the things. So I still do research and I keep it in the back of my head, even though it's not necessarily consciously in the front of my head. Um, uh, 
Uh, Chris says, my student Benta has a question. Is this your usual amount that you spend on a character? Um, it varies from project to project. Um, probably, probably about so. Um, if, if it's something that I know is going to be lasting for a long time, like I'm doing a comic series coming up that is hopefully going to run quite a few books. Uh, I spend a lot more time on the main characters for that than I do on other things because I know I'm going to have to draw them over and over and over. Um, and I want to make sure that they work, but even then it tends to be a pretty short uh, amount of time. And so it's rare that I spend more than like one drawing that I just keep reworking to find a character. Um, unless I'm doing contract stuff uh, with an animation or game studio, in which case, like I said, you're, you're getting a lot of takes on the same thing and a lot of variations on it and things that I'll start to abandon. I'll see through to some degree of completion, usually something like this. Um, and actually when I do, um, uh, design like purely strictly design work this is about the degree of completion that clients get like they don't really get a finished drawing uh unless that's what they need in order to sell that particular concept up the ladder um usually it's more about finding things that can then be passed on to somebody else that can then take them further um and i sort of work at that those early stages of, of design um but yeah, I think I think this is about even though it's slowed down because I'm talking and because I'm I'm addressing decisions, um, this is usually about what goes through uh, to to get to something like that. Um, uh, Jordan asks, when you go from the source to your design, do you enjoy your original picture in mind or stay close to the actual details described? Um, I try really hard to never have a picture in my head of what a drawing is going to look like. Um, uh, I, because when I was a kid and I had a vision of something and would try to work on it, it would never come out the way that I wanted it to. And I would always be disappointed. And to this day, I almost never, uh, never do like I'll wear, you know, I'll, I'll go from a thumbnail to a larger thing, but really I try to figure out everything on the page if I can. And so, um, because the 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 drawing itself will suggest to me things that it wants to do and what it wants to look like and i i just i can't picture something in my head ahead of time like it has to it has to manifest itself through the work um so there isn't so if i if i understand your question correctly um uh i think there's that like i do i i do think about the elements of the design. So like I think about the, 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 the cut across the shoulders and the white mantle and things like that, like those things are circulating in there, but they don't coalesce until I actually put it on paper. So guys, thank you all so very much for uh, joining me today. This was a lot of fun. This is the first time uh, I've done something like this, I think. So I uh, am really glad to have gotten to do so. Uh, thank you for your questions. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your support. Uh, the Arthurian figure set will be up uh, very soon. So um, thank you guys so much and have a great afternoon.